You're listening to Somewhat Frank with me, Frank Gruber. After working in the corporate world for a decade, I decided to blaze my own path by co-founding Tech Cocktail, which helped catalyze local startup communities and eventually turned into Techco Media, a site which grew to millions of readers and was eventually acquired. Over the past decade, I've interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs and thought leaders from some of the fastest growing and most successful companies in history. And along the way, I've learned amazing lessons from my experiences. So we're going to talk about startups, tech, innovation, and their intersection with personal life, and anything else on Frank Gruber's mind. So let's get started being somewhat frank. Somewhat Frank is produced with the help of Established, my new company. Somewhat Frank, and I'm back. It's been a while. It's been a a long while, actually. It's been about eight months. Probably could have had a baby by now. Uh, but yeah, I'm ha- happy to be back. I've got a new format today, uh, mainly because I couldn't get this done faster. <laughs> so we decided to switch it up and we figured out there were some, must have been some tensions blocking me from producing more podcasts and we want to make it fun and light. So I've got a uh, co-host that I've, is going to be joining me, um, introduce him in a minute, uh, and we're going to switch up the format. So, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Johnny Goodtimes. Welcome, Johnny. Frank, how you doing, big guy? Doing well, doing well. Good to hear you. Uh, so yeah, we've got a slightly different uh, format today. We're going to switch it up. We're going to talk about my newsletter, some of the things I've I put out in this newsletter. So if you aren't familiar, I started a newsletter this last summer uh, and decided to really just share some of the things I'm seeing in the world, things that people in my network that are doing amazing things. Uh, there's so many great people out there doing great stuff, and I wanted to celebrate them, which is very in line with what I've been about for the last decade or so, is really celebrating your wins. And so I thought it'd be good to kind of showcase some of those people, showcase some of the cool things that I'm finding, some of the things I'm listening to, some of the things I'm, I'm liking, uh, and things I'm testing out. So we're going to go through some of that stuff today, and hopefully we'll make this more regular. I think eight months is a little bit too too long of a wait, a wait for a podcast, even though I, I hope some of my listeners are still there. Uh, but yeah, that's the new format. What do you think, Johnny? It's been far too long, Frank. You got to give the people what they want, <laughs> exactly. and they want more. They want more of somewhat Frank. Yep, they want I want to know so. what's going on in your life. What good stuffs? What good stuffs going on out there in the world? And I can't think of anybody better to to bring it to them than than you. So Thank you're you. very you're a very well rounded person. You're a dilly dallier, as we all know. Um, <laughs> you, you're an informer. You uh-huh. like to go around yeah. and inform people uh-huh. what things that are going on. So, I think this format will be will be will be good, and we can get these episodes out uh, a lot faster, yeah. and so that you can give people what they're looking for. We should also mention, though, I haven't been just dilly dallying. We did put out. We have another podcast, the Startup of the Year podcast, which kind of started to take up a lot of of space, uh, mind space anyway. And so that's been getting out there more regularly as well. So if you aren't familiar, go check out the start of the year podcast. It, Cause that's the one we've been focusing on and somewhat Frank kind of got pushed to the back burner, but no more. Well, I, right. And I should, I should take that back a step. You're, you dilly dally, but in a good way, right? you, you, uh, <laughs> Smell you, the roses. you get a lot of, you get a lot of stuff done while enjoying, enjoying the world. Exactly. So, yes. I do take one or two Instagram photos as well. Well, yes, you take hundreds of them, and (laughs) and I know people very much look forward to them, including my mom. (laughs) Shout out to my mom. Yes. Who consistently calls me and updates me. Not only do I look at your posts, but my mom looks at your posts and then calls me and tells me about your posts. Oh, nice. So I'm getting double... Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting double the information from Frank. But let's do this. I want to talk to you about what you have going on recently. I notice, well, not only from your Instagram posts, but also from your uh, constant text messaging as well. That um, looks like you've been in D.C. recently to watch the to hang out and be around the festivities from the World Series. So yes, tell all the listeners and, and let us know how it what how it was. Yeah, last week was um, really uh, amazing to be in D.C. Uh, first off, the weather was in the 80s, which is pretty warm for this time of year. But secondly, you couldn't time enough better that you know to plan like, oh gosh, I'm going to go hang out in D.C. and when will it be? Oh, during the first World Series since 1933. <laughs> um, so hung out uh, all wow. down in the Navy Yards, which is all by where you know the World Series and Nats Park is, and uh, it was a great time to be down there. The energy. Was similar to you know Wrigleyville in 2016 when the Cubs won the World Series. Um, it's just not as big of an area, but and they haven't obviously been waiting quite as long as the Cubbies. But it was really great energy. They had watch parties kind of throughout the area. They you know they had the games actually three games there, and unfortunately the Nats lost them, lost all three of them. But 
we know what happens in the end. <laughs> so um, they did. Right. They did win the whole thing and and won the whole thing on the road, which is the first time that any professional sport has lost every home game and still won their championship. So um, pretty pretty amazing <laughs> so you, accomplishment. <laughs> you were their good. You you were not their good luck charm in DC. Well, is what I you're didn't. Saying? Yeah. Well, maybe I don't know. I didn't actually go to. I, I didn't go to the games. I couldn't pull the trigger on actually um, picking up the tickets because they were so expensive, and I lost every lottery that I could for actually you know regular face value tickets. So um, decided not to do it and watched it you know nearby and the festivities around the area were so good that it didn't really matter. Uh, but then I ended up going to a couple of watch parties at this at the actual park when they weren't in town, which was. It was quite frankly weird because they're not on the field and it kind of feels weird to watch on a big screen, but it was fun, um, you know, to be there. And, and so I, I did that the, the last couple of games and even the one where they won the World Series. It was it was pouring rain in Washington, D.C. while they were playing in Houston, you know, probably under a dome. And, uh, yeah, stuck it out to watch the whole thing. And it, it got it really exciting in the end, obviously, and they ended up winning it. So pretty fun to be at. I love the energy that uh, the crowd brings when – um, something like that happens um, reminds me a lot of you know 2016 and even some of the years where the Cubs were really close or uh, you know just sporting events in general you can really thrive off that energy. Can I ask a question? Of course. Is that a lot? Is that agreeable? <laughs> uh, were the Nationals the Nationals back in '33 or are they? Or is that oh a new no, no. Name? Yeah, so they changed the name. So the, the Nationals are actually the Montreal Expos from back in the day, and they moved in 2005. And changed the franchise name to Washington Nationals. But yeah, back in the day when they were in Washington, uh, it was the Washington Senators, which one of their main players oh, back right. then was uh, Walter Johnson. He owns a lot of the pitching records. But yeah, the actual franchise, the Washington Nationals, has never won a, a championship till now. That's good to know. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I actually didn't know that. I'm glad I asked. So you were only there for the for the game as well. I think you went to the – Yeah. What, were you there for work yeah, as well? Work, you went yeah. to the conference kind or of something? Trying to, yeah, trying to do a couple things at one time. And so it just worked out that there's also a um, a conference happening on Monday. It was the uh, Next Gen uh, Venture Partners. So Next Gen's a, an, an investment firm that invests in startups. It started as Next Gen Angels back in probably like eight or – eight or so years ago and both uh my wife jen and i were part of that first initial 40 under 40 angels and we were just doing angel investments um every month uh we'd meet and do an investment in something and so um now it's grown they they actually got acquired by um brown associates and they are doing uh, a lot more investments they've got a lot more different funds but we're part of the fund that they just raised and are investing in all the things that they see and so it's great to be there a lot of really great people to reconnect with in DC and folks that were in town for it and a lot of great companies uh, sharing what they're up to. So Frank, I know that you and I just both got back from Memphis a few weeks ago as we were down there for the startup of the year summit. And um, how do you think it went? I think it went great. I mean, I hadn't been down in Memphis in a while and I don't know if you just saw this last weekend as we were watching college football. If you do watch that, uh, game day was there. I do, so. I do watch. Yes, <laughs> I thought you I was did. happy to. See, I have a, actually. I was happy to see that Memphis it looked very familiar. I think they were on Beale Street, right? Yeah, they were on Beale Street. They were hanging out there all week uh, weekend, and uh, it was kind of fun to ha- to see that backdrop as we just were there a few weeks ago uh, for our summit. So our start of the year summit concludes our big start of the year program, where we, you know vet thousands of companies down to a hundred that they all compete and then narrow it down to 15 and five and then name the start of the year. And this year our winner uh, was really interesting. It, it's a, um, not that they're not interesting every year, but this year it was, uh, you know, a company called Re3D and they are basically, they have a really large oversized printer, 3D printer that they've, they've got. And they also are kind of working with different groups to turn recyclable, plastics into things so like uh the company's out of uh austin texas and and puerto rico and have worked with puerto rico on some of the things that they've after like their hurricane um hit them uh taking some of the garbage and things that it were plastics and turning them into physical objects that they then re i guess that's where they got their name right they they 3d print and re 3d <laughs> so makes a lot of sense um what they're up to and uh gave a great pitch down there what do you think that yeah, was very cool, and I know that their team is, is a very interesting team. Uh, Samantha, or some sorry, Samantha Snabs, yep, I believe it Snabs. was. Yep, right. She's a she's a pilot. She's, I think her her what's her her handle is NASA. Is that right? And she's a, a pilot with the what was it the Air Force or the Reserves or something yep. like that. Yep. 
That's no, right. very interesting company. And you know what I think is interesting too about um, 3D printing these days is uh, they're nowadays, I think that they're f- uh, equipping the space station and some of the the uh, space aircraft with 3D printer- printers, which is pretty cool if you think about it, because once you get up to space, you, you can, can only take things. so much cargo with you up there. You can make tools up there and different things if you need to, you know, you can actually build on for your spacecraft or whatever the case may be in emergency situations. So, right. Yeah. Very back cool in the day, stuff. you know what they used to do? That was like, think about back in the day when it was, they were crossing the prairie and they're, you know, covered back wagons or whatever they would have to like whittle a single piece of wood into some <laughs> object now you can literally just yes. take your 3d printer out reprint i'm gonna print a toilet you know or whatever anywhere you go uh-huh it's a great <laughs> idea i, I like it a lot i know no, it was cool and it was yeah. a it was a great event i think that uh, did a lot to bring some attention to to memphis and the, the great companies and, and the great city that they have going on that they have down there. So it was amazing. Yep. But anyways, Frank, I know that as part of your newsletter and just you in general, you like to celebrate your Celebration. friends yep. right, and their, and their victories. So yep. what, what, uh, what do your friends and people in your network have going on these days? Uh, quite a bit. Uh, this last week, I, I shared some insight about uh, a friend of mine, Sarah Lacey. She'd been working on her publication, Pando. It started as Pando Daily and then turned into Pando. And she kind of had a, a bumpy road there for a little while the last few years as she was threatened. And, you know, she was really about sharing truth. And in some ways, um, you know, they came after her. So long story short, she was able to to sell that. She's now working on another company uh, called Chairman Mom. Um where she's doing a lot more like retreats and things for um, executive moms. And so kind of had already shifted out, but long story short, uh, it was acquired recently by a guy also from my network, Todd Garland uh, with buy, sell ads. So uh, if you go to the site now, I think it's down for maintenance. Pando is, but um, I think they'll be coming up soon with whatever their plan is, but she put a lot of great content out for a long time and was similar to what we were doing with TechCo for a little while. Um, she, she had done experimented with um, paywalls and things like that. So Great to see her finally um, exiting that company and working on her next thing. Um, I also had, you know, <laughs> boy, folks over at Rise of the Rest, which is Steve Case, the uh, founder of AOL, and his his um, his in, uh, investment firm Revolution have been just crushing it, like one right after another. So they they just, I think, raised a bunch of money for a different fund, but they now have raised their second uh, $150 million Rise of the Rest fund, which is, uh, you know, basically going to be investing in companies everywhere everywhere else uh, and it's been a, a tour they've been doing for the last um i'd say six or seven years i've been on a bunch of their bus tours where they pick five cities and traveled through those five cities one a day um, they're very intense a lot of fun you meet a lot of people and they invest in a, a single company in each city so this fund is is similar it's not going to be doing all those bus tours but that will probably invest in some of the companies they continue to see on those bus tours and everything else in between and very in line with um everything we're kind of all about with start of the year and establish and established venture so love what so, they're doing frank can i ask you sure and i, I know that it, you know you worked at aol back in the day but how did you first personally meet steve um, yeah, it's funny. Uh, we, we just, cause we were in DC at the time. And I think the first time I met him in person was at a, um, what was it? Washingtonian magazine, uh, Washington. We were, we were t- tech Titans. So I was a tech Titan for like three or four different times. Every so often they put out this, um, this whole magazine, uh, all about the Washington tech Titans. And I, I would, um, I was in, included in that list, um, back in like, Oh, eight maybe or oh seven a long time ago oh oh eight i think and so it um so anyway we we connected at that but then just stayed in touch and realized that both my wife and i had worked at aol and so started looping them into different things and then startup of the year or sorry startup america which is this big partnership uh private and, and public partnership to kind of enth- you know bring enthusiasm to entrepreneurship in america um started in dc too and he was a chairman of that so through that we worked a lot more closely with them got more involved and then just continued to, to maintain a relationship and now you know we've been on multiple bus tours through i don't even hands full of city couple of, you know dozen cities um throughout throughout the last few years and so um gotten to know him and, and his wife Jean uh much better and really doing great stuff they could literally be 
on an island somewhere just hanging out and they don't they're not they don't stop they're continuing to to foster entrepreneurship invest in um you know companies all over uh they also got the case foundation which is doing great stuff um for both women and minorities and and just amazing stuff that they're doing uh based out of dc so um he's got a great team though like anna mason leads up that as well and um david hall and and um you know mary grove he he actually recruited over from from google for entrepreneurs or google for startups uh so great team of folks working on that rise of rest stuff and not to mention the folks that you don't hear about as much uh, who are closing all the deals you know and, and keeping the wheels turning behind the scenes so great team out of dc um and then we also got uh amanda slavin who i met in in las vegas so she started a company called catalyst creative and and just launched a book recently uh called the seventh uh seventh level and so just kind of gave her a shout out she's got her first book out there and um she's also done a lot in the kind of agency kind of world and um back when we were doing events every we used to do events every single month in las vegas so if you the tech week month, we would do the second week of every month. We would do a, a summit in Las Vegas, downtown Las Vegas with downtown Las Vegas as the backdrop. And, you know, we would do that. And then I think it was the third or fourth week, she would do a catalyst week, which was um, slightly different. It wasn't really as much focus on tech and startups. It was, um, you know, different types of people, but had a week where she would bring people into town for that. And so we got to know her and her team better back then. Uh, when we started doing those. So she got a new book out. Uh, check it out. It's on Amazon, uh, The Seventh Level, and uh, transforming, uh, transform your business through meaningful engagement with your con- customers and employees. So if you're interested in doing that, you should definitely download it. Sounds I think, pretty good. I think it was 99 cents last week, too. It might still be if you get the, Kin- really? the Kindle version, which is a steal. Yeah. And let's see, who else? Chris, Chris Cunningham, who I've known for a while uh, through App Savvy. He had another company called App Savvy. Um, he just raised a fund. So he's investing in startups now too. So he's got a new fund, a $10 million fund to invest in startups. So I always like to give those new fund folks a shout out as well. Cause there's just so many opportunities um, for companies to get, or so there's not, there's not many, as many opportunities for startups to get investment, especially off, outside of the coast. So I always like to shout out the new ones and get um, more visibility on what they're doing because we need startups to find them and vice versa. So that's, that was my updates and my friends. I'm sure there's, there's things that are happening that I I may have missed, but so let me know if uh, something interesting happening to you or uh, doing something cool. I'd love to share it. For sure. A lot of good stuff going on. Yep. Um, And I don't think anybody expects you to know everything that's going on. (laughs) Although you have a pretty, I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, I don't know anybody else doing this stuff. So is there anybody you don't know, Frank? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Quite a few. I remember I met a person one time that met you and, um, called you the LeBron John uh, LeBron James of the of the startup world which I think is pretty appropriate you know <laughs> that's you know right everybody. yeah that's what I go by now <laughs> LeBron LeBron Frank yeah, yeah like right that. yes we're dropping it somewhat yeah. yep exactly um <laughs> all right good stuff man. so well, let's talk about a, an upcoming event I know that we have a, a Chicago a Chicago NASA iTech event coming up Ign- ignite the night um, in Chicago, November 14th, I think there's going to be a competition, some good judges, and uh, a lot of great people uh, getting together up there. Anything else to add about that? Uh, no, I just we used to do lots of events in Chicago back to, back in the tech cocktail days, so it's fun to go back, um, check, you know, continue to, to try to support that community. But uh, and of course, I love Chicago, so it's it'll be good to be back there. And I'm supposed to speak on that at that event, and still working on what that's going to be about. Um, still trying to understand who the audience is exactly, so still working through that. But um, it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun to be actually. Uh, they got a lot, of, a lot of great companies coming out to pitch NASA, which um, they'll have their some of their chief technologists there. And what could be cooler than sharing your like innovation with like a NASA, you know, scientist or whatever? <laughs> that's pretty neat. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, as an early stage company founder having a new technology and get, being able to get some feedback from uh, NASA, you know, chief technology officer or anybody on their team, I think would be amazing and yeah. incredibly valuable. So that's, a, that's a, sounds like a good event. Yes. And I know NASA has a lot of good stuff going on with their iTech initiatives. So, yes. um, so Frank, let me ask you this, any, anything that you've been consuming or reading or watching lately that you're excited about? <laughs> well, what I like to do is always like, oh, I read a lot. So when I do see cool things, I always try to take note and then I share those back out uh, through my newsletter. So lots of neat things happening. Um, there was an article I read in the New York Times about 
um, how photos of your kids are powering surveillance technology, which caught my attention. Um, being a dad, you know, I'm like, what? Like, that's kind of crazy. So, a uh, great article out there on New York Times, and it's um, basically a how scary, a little scary too. A little huh? scary, yeah. So, there's this database that is called MegaFace, and images from like Flickr. So, I don't know if you remember Flickr. I used to use it religiously back before Instagram existed. Did you use it? Um, Flickr? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. And you told me about it, so yeah. that's how I started <laughs> yeah, using Exactly. It. So back in the day, if you can imagine, like when you had your flip phone and you took a photo, it wasn't an iPhone quality photo, and you'd put it, you'd basically upload it immediately to Flickr. People would go on this app on the internet, not on your phone, because no one could view f- images on their phone yet. And you'd like, it was like Instagram on the web, basically. So Flickr was basically Instagram. And so because of that, there's images out there, and they had some great um you know, protocols, APIs to be able to pull in images and in into any kind of application and things like that. So super geeky stuff right now we're talking about. But either way, um, <laughs> this thing called Megaface basically sucked all these images in and they, they use those images uh, to basically train uh, facial recognition, uh, you know, through this, this mega database. So um, the long story short of it is there's images from like 2005 of kids that, you know, are no longer kids because that was a while ago, um, being used to train uh, and inform this this database of what to look for. And so a whole article out there, and it's interesting about, you know, just in general about but the idea that your, that your photos are, we live in public, right? Like those photos that you put out there um, could be used if there's APIs that Flickr, who is now owned by Verizon, by the way, because it was part of Yahoo, right? So um, long story wow. short, be careful what you put out there because we do live in public, um, could end up being used to inform a facial recognition facial recognition technology <laughs> that then is used in other ways. Who knows? So right. something to be thinking about as you're um, posting on Instagram or other things. Uh, data and data mining always blows my mind, and um, I think yeah. that it's important to realize that if you put something out there at any time, that you know, usually the T's and C's allow them to do whatever they want with it for the most part. So right, and then things think of things like acquisitions, right? Like you know, who would have oh, thought back sure. in the day that Yahoo would fall to being absorbed by you know Verizon, which also AOL is part of now too. So a lot of things happening since then, and. Um, who knows? They'll rewrite the terms and services, right? And then just send you a note and be like, oh, we updated that. <laughs> you know? So For sure. it can happen. Well, good, man. Well, I know there's a lot of, like, a, we have a, a huge list of things we could talk about. Well, but um, have you ever had an Impossible Burger? That's my next question. No, I've been dying to, by the way. And I just saw that um, I think Burger King, their quarterly earnings are, you know, spiked significantly because of the the Impossible Burger, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And uh, I know you've had it. So what do you think? What do you well, think? it's interesting. It's really so. There's two kinds of meats that are similar that are not meats right now. And like we actually had Beyond Beyond Burgers last night. So Beyond Meats has a burger that you can buy at like Whole Foods or um, actually not even Whole anywhere. Like pretty much they they sell them right where you sell the regular ground beef or whatever. So um, and they taste great. They come in packs of two, and um, you basically cook them like a normal burger and they taste like burger you could honestly not tell so the uh, impossible um burgers or impossible meat i think it's the name of it is the same kind of thing but you you it's it's more um you buy it through different so they, they, they don't sell direct to consumer yet or if they do it's it's not been as readily available um somebody told me recently they sell them at wegmans but i haven't i don't have a wegmans around here so anyway they've gone more of the uh direct through the like the, the deals right so like they've done partnerships with um, folks like Burger King and and other places and anyway they're they taste better in my opinion than the beyond meat burger so uh, I don't know what it is they're doing they're doing something in there with that um, all the different proteins and things and when you actually cook it it actually releases these these types of I don't know if it smells or or whatever and it makes you think you're eating meat. <laughs> It's crazy. I like it. I got to try it out. I'm, I'm honestly going to try it out. I have yet to do it. I know everybody's been talking about it, and mm-hmm. ranting and raving. So well, it's a, just do it's it. On my do, list. do it at your at your own risk. I have no idea what's actually in there, and that's why um, I put an article out about what's in an Impossible Burger. And um, you know, I mean, <laughs> who's to say you know, if this any of this stuff is nutritious or good for you? You know, down the road we may find out that it isn't. Who knows? But well, I feel like some- everything's bad. Ev- everything's bad for you these days. So one right. way or the other, I yeah. think that fruits and vegetables. Right. I'll, I'll risk it with fruits but- and vegetables over, over uh, 
you know, a, a, a cow any day. Well, but, um, it's interesting because like certain things get through. So like, I don't know if you know, but like certain types of Parmesan cheese actually have wood in them. Like if you, and it, the reason they, yeah, the reason they do it is to keep it so it doesn't um, get all bunched together. So they actually put some wood in there to make your char- Parmesan cheese stay flaky. So that's what I'm saying. What kind of wood Thanks. are we talking about? I don't know. Balsam? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no Balsa? idea. Yeah, I, have no idea. I don't know. But it's it's basically wood particles in there to make you, so you're actually eating wood when you eat parma, certain kinds of Parmesan cheese. So Sounds something to think fishy. about. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> no, okay. delicious. Good, buddy. Mm, crunchy. So well, the last uh, thing you know, I wanted to, last thing I okay. wanted to ask you about was oh sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um I know that I saw in your newsletter you wrote something about that we're all African and uh yes. it looks like our our ancestral lineage is being traced back through Africa. So yeah. I'm, I'm interested to learn a little bit more about that. What did you find out? Well, I just was shocked. There's an article out there. Um, I think independent, the independent put it out, which is UK based uh, that says, you know, homo, homo sapiens origin is um, all comes back to a river in Africa. So, if you, you know, we're, we're all African <laughs> and it dates back to seven, 70,000 years or 700, 70, yeah, 70,000 years. So, um, so there's a new article or new, uh, paper published in, uh, the journal nature and that talks all about this and, um, it's kind of crazy, right? Like after all the things that we see out there and how there's been, um, you know, so many things around race and, and whatnot. Well, we all come from the same, same place is what this is saying. So that's pretty, pretty powerful and pretty interesting to find out. Well, that makes sense to yeah. me. Um, and, but I would never have been reading it if I didn't, if we didn't have the internet, which was born 50 years ago as of last oh, week. Oh, so. congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Happy congratulations, birthday, internet. internet. <laughs> yeah. That's, so that's pretty, that's pretty good stuff. No, I mean, what kind of, what area of Africa are we talking about? Are we talking about Egypt, Ghana, uh, South Africa? Yeah. Let me, I, I actually don't remember. Off the the Nile River, I'm assuming. Seems yeah. Seems to be a big one. Yeah. Let me look really quick if I can find it. Um, where does it say? Mesopotamia. I thought we were all from Mesopotamia, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, the wetlands south of Zambezi, Zambezi River, Zambezi, Z A M B E Z I River, was the oh, okay. cradle of all right mankind. Next to, right next to Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, yep. So pretty cool. Yeah, and so that was about no, seventy thousand years ago. That makes sense, and it's all you know. We all we all are related in one form or another. So that's good to know. Yep. Well, good totally. stuff, Frank. Well, I appreciate you letting me tag along and be your co-host here uh, on this episode. And yeah. hopefully we can do it again sometime. Thanks so much, Johnny. Good times. We're, we're excited to be back on track. And uh, if you didn't get a chance, check out the newsletter because there's a lot more links than the ones we, we talked about. You can get it at frankgruber.me forward slash newsletter. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening. This is Somewhat Frank signing off. Frank Gruber. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe online, iTunes, SoundCloud, Android, wherever you can find it. Somewhat Frank Podcast. We'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks so much.